hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, hanging out. So, so, hey, give it up for your host, Jesse Jarvis. Give it up for your host. What a kid, you know? Recently engaged. Recently engaged. It's true, yeah. I'm not engaged. No, quite the opposite. My wife just died, you know? But you know what they say when you lose someone you love? They're always the last place you look. You know? Because I lost her. Okay. Hey, so speaking of being single, so I was on Tinder. You guys know what Tinder is? Okay. So I was on Tinder, and this girl messaged me. She said, hey, boo. You yeah, know, that's what she said to me. She said, hey, boo. I said, I'm sorry, man, but I don't date ghosts. <laughs> you know? Ghosts, uh, ghosts, and boo. Kim Cardusian told me that joke. True story, true story. So this other girl messaged me on Tinder, you know? I don't think she was a ghost, but you could never be too sure. So I asked her to describe herself, you know? And she said she had nice hips. And I said, oh, wow, you know? And she said she had big boobs. So I said, oh, well. Well, then she says to me, she said, she said she had no butt. And I said, well, then how do you poop? <laughs> you know? Without a butt. Hey, speaking of people on the dating scene, so my son, you guys know him, my son? Yeah. So the other day, he told me he was pansexual, you know? Now I gotta hide my pots and pans. <laughs> you know? In case he, uh, in case he tries to, uh, you know, in case he, uh, he tries to, uh, you know, in case uh, he tries to uh, have sex with a flying little boy who murders pirates. Hey, speaking of things you don't agree with, have you heard about this elitist secret society? That not only, ladies and gentlemen, not only has it been pulling the strings on the world stage for over a millennium, but it's been engaging in such heinous acts like pedophilia, satanic sacrifice, toppling <laughs> governments, black magic, crippling economies, and trying to enslave the masses in a new world order. I guess you can say these folks have been pretty Illuma naughty. <laughs> well, they're naughty. Alright, what's up with this guy at the bar, huh? Huh? What, that last joke hit too close to home? Huh? You take personal offense to one of these fellas that puts on a robe and has sex with strange looking ladies in big marble houses? Huh? <laughs> you know? Hey, speaking of people that wear robes, I went in front of the judge. You guys know what judges are, right? Okay. So I went in front of the judge. He told me to take the stand. Then he made me give it back. <laughs> you know? Because I took it. I uh, figure this guy over here doesn't like jokes about a law and order, huh? You know, the kind of jokes that Jesse Jarvis tells about Kim Cardesian's butt, you know? I don't like those kind of celebrities, you know, the, uh, those uh, shallow celebrities. I like my celebrities to be well-rounded, you know? I like my celebrities to be well-rounded, which is why I'm such a fan of Adele. You know? She's, uh, she's round. You know? Hey, speaking of celebrities, you guys ever hear of Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know him, you know Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, did you know that Arnold Schwarzenegger, before he started his career in the pictures, used to be a chess player? It's true! It's true! He used to play chess all the time! And one day he was playing chess, ladies and gentlemen, one day he was playing in chess against all people. He was playing against Edward Furlong, you know? Remember him? Remember that kid? You know? He's not a kid anymore, and that was a fat drug addict. At the time, he was a kid. And he was playing against all people. He was playing against all Schwarzenegger. Now, in this particular game, ladies and gentlemen, this particular game, the uh, Kevin Furlong, remember him? Yeah, Kevin Furlong had a, uh, he had a, uh, one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's, had one of his, uh, one hand of his pawns pinned, you know? Now, I don't know if any of you guys are any, uh, you know, Bobby Fishers, you know, you know him. I don't know if he any Bobby Fishers. He's a... Uh, he was a chess master, you know? Now he's a schizophrenic anti-Semite, but at one point he was, uh, he was a chess master, you know? I don't know if you guys are uh, Bobby Fishers, but you know, when you have a piece pinned, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a piece pinned, that means it's under attack by two different pieces. No, I know what you're thinking, ma'am. I know what you're thinking. You're like, this is just a pawn. Who cares about that? You know? This is one of them little pieces that moves forward, you know, one square at a time, you know? Unless, of course, it's the opening move. You don't need to be a Bobby Fisher, you know that. Unless, of course, it's the opening move in which it moves to, you know? It's not like a, it's not like a knight, you know, them horsey-looking guys? You know that moves in an L shape? You guys know what L's are? No, you know, it's not one of them, you know? And it's not a bishop, you know, the pointy hat guys? It looks like a big, juicy cock, you know, the kind of thing that Jesse Jarvis is into? It moves like that, you know? 
And it's not like a rook, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a rook, you know, them castle-looking fellows, you know, move up and down and left and right or whatever they do, you know? And it's not a queen, ladies and gentlemen. It's certainly not a queen, you know, them pieces that just do whatever the fuck they want, you know, like the late wife, you know? <laughs> and them fucking bitches and doesn't wear the fuck they want all over the board, you know, as far as they please, you know, not one of them. It's just, uh, it's just a pawn, you know? But this is the F7 pawn, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I don't know if you guys are Bobby Fishers, you know? I have a feeling that this guy over here is, but you know, just which I mean, uh, he's a he's a schizophrenic anti-Semite, you know, not a chess master. But I don't know if any of you guys are chess masters, but the F7 pawn, ladies and gentlemen, the F7 pawn is that piece that's one up and over from the king. And so Edward Furlong had that piece pinned. He got it pinned by his bishop. You know that thing looks like Jesse Jarvis's cock, you know? I was on I was on C4, you know. And he had his knight, you know, that horsey-looking guy, you know, and, uh, and has the size of a cock that Jesse Jarvis wishes he had, you know, on, uh, on G5, you know? And so Edward Furlong, remember, he's playing Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know? Edward Furlong made a very good decision, you know? He made some bad decisions later in life, which is why he became a fat drug addict. But at this time, he made a good decision, and he moved his, his, uh, his bishop. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm skipping over my words because I'm so excited because I can't imagine how you guys are feeling here in this story. I know. I'm, in, I'm excited, so I know you guys are excited. I'm tripping over my words, ladies and gentlemen. But what Edward Furlong did is he moved his bishop in and he took the pawn. That was checkmate. That was game over, you know? Now, none of the details of that story are important, you know. I didn't need to tell any of that. That was not important, but I can tell I would throw you were with the story. You're practically begging me, ladies and gentlemen. I practically had a gun on through my head, begging to hear the details. But none of that was important. What's important is it was game over and time for a rematch. And so Edward Furlong, you know, they had to decide who's going to play what color. So Edward Furlong just blurted out. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, he has impulse problems, you know. He one day become a fat drug addict. So he just blurted out and said, you know, he said, I'll be white. Right. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, in response, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, he said, out of be. Because remember, he had that big booty last night. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So Edward Furlong, remember, he said, what came out of his mouth was he said, because remember, you know, ladies and gentlemen, nowadays not a lot of stuff comes out of Edward Furlong's mouth. You know, things go in, you know, like hamburgers and, and pills and other guys' pots so he can, uh, so can afford those hamburgers and pills, you know. But at this point in time, according to the time of the story was taking place, something was coming out of his mouth, and it was the words, ladies and gentlemen, it was the words in which he said, he said, I'll be white. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, he said, out of be. Because remember, you know, he could argue with him, you know, he could argue with him, but you know what you say, you know, serve it for the game, you know. So he did, you know, he saved the question for the game, and he said, because remember, he said he had the choice if he was going to be white or not. Gizio had a and said he was going to be white, and he said, I'll play white. And so Arnold Schwarzenegger, what he said, he said, out of be red. No, wait, no, that's, uh, that's checkers. No, right away, that's not checkers. What is that, back in What did he say? He said, oh, yeah, he said I'll be black, you know. That's what he said. <laughs> Oh God, it sounds like one of Jesse Jarvis's jokes, you know, the punchlines about the blacks, you know? <laughs> okay, what a great guy, Jesse Jarvis. In fact, soon to be married, and you know they've recently engaged. In fact, uh, I played a little bachelor prank on uh, Jesse Jarvis, and I stole his jokes for his upcoming show. So here we go, I'm going to read some jokes written by your host and my friend, the great Jesse Jarvis. So here we go. I, Jesse Jarvis, am a stand-up comedian. And when I do a good set, I kill. That's an that's a industry term, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so when I do a good set, I kill. But when I have a bad set, I bomb. In fact, I bomb and I kill so much, I often feel like my role model, Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> see, yeah, see, I don't like that joke very much. Right. I find it that's not really funny. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's the next joke written by our rising star. Local comedian, very funny, very funny man, Jesse Jarvis. Here we go. I, Jesse Jarvis, <laughs> believe the greatest tragedy in my lifetime to befall the nation, I don't know if it's a real word, Jesse, to befall the nation happened on September 11th, 2001. I think we can all agree on that, don't we? Yes, the greatest tragedy to befall the nation happened on September 11, 2001, when the passengers of Flight 93 overpowered the hijackers, crashing into a field instead of the Capitol building. Oh, Jesse! <laughs> Jesse! That's not even a joke! It's just the inane ramblings of a madman. Oh, let's see if this one's any better. Here we go. Here we go. The recently engaged family man, Jesse Jarvis. Here we go. I, Jesse Jarvis, believe that all Americans are created equal. 
It doesn't matter to me if you're white or black, man or woman, Christian or Jew, gay or straight. You are all equally a part of the head of the great evil snake, which must be severed by the flaming sword of Islam. Jesse! Jesse! What is that matter with you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very sick and original idea. Let's see if this next joke's any better. Let's see if you can dance yourself with this one. All right. Oh, here's a children's joke, ladies and gentlemen. You're here right on time to hear a children's joke written by uh, Jesse Jarvis. I hope you're a little more appropriate. All right. Knock, knock. This is a knock, knock joke, ladies and gentlemen. So when I say knock, knock, it's like, who's there? Okay, so knock, knock. Al. Al who? Al Akbar. <laughs> what? What the fuck, Jesse? <laughs> All right, here's the pet ultimate joke. That means second to last, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the pet ultimate joke written by a good friend of mine. You know, he's a great kid and all, you know, even though he's a, I don't know what the hell's wrong with him. But here we go, the pet ultimate joke written by Jesse Jarvis. Here we go. Hi, Jesse Jarvis. We'll only tell jokes from now on where the punchline is PC. Okay, you had a change of heart. That's very good. Yes, I will only tell jokes from now on where the punchline is about those PCs of shit, the queers. Oh, Jesse! Jesse, I take personal offense to that. You know my son's one of them pansexuals, you know? Sexual half-goat, foot-playing things that hide in the woods, or I don't know what the hell. Everyone sticks his dick in a jar of peanut butter or something, I don't know. But, you know, I take offense to that, man. All right, here's the last joke. Let's see if this one's a saver. That's another industry term. Let's see if this one's a saver. The final joke written by Jesse Jarvis. Here we go. Hi, Jesse Jarvis. Enjoy going to the theater to experience a real treat like the silence of the lambs. But what I'd really appreciate is the silence of the blacks. Jesse! Jesse! I told you, ladies and gentlemen, he told jokes like that. Here, well, I gotta go. Here, hopefully you come up here and explain yourself, you explain How could you write things like that and put them in your pocket for someone like me to steal and read out loud? You gotta be more careful with that kind of thing. Disgusting, man. All right. All right, yeah, he's right, he's right. Uh, your next comic, yeah, uh, really funny, you 